All right, welcome everybody to this uh, fifth workshop of Catalyst. Um, this workshop is Ethical UX Design, Breaking Dark dark patterns with Peter Zhao. Um, Peter is a senior product designer at Project 44 um, and currently working from San Francisco um, as a product designer focusing on supply chain visualization. Um, so yeah, uh, welcome, welcome everybody. And Peter, if you would like to give your own introduction um, and kind of take it away. Yeah, of course. Um, it's amazing to see everyone and um, it's an amazing opportunity to share this with the young design community. I feel like um, how as a designer we think about ethical design is always important for product and what kind of impact we can bring to different products is uh, really impacting everyone's life. And a little bit introduction about myself. I'm currently at Project 44 as senior product designer. Um, we are working on visibility for end-to-end -end supply chain, uh, which as you guys pretty much know, the supply chain is a lot of pressure today. So I hope you guys enjoy the content I share here and bring ethical design to your day-to-day -day work. So I'm going to share screen and start the presentation. One second. So yeah, um, today I feel like as a designer, we actually play such a key role in the creation for the technology. And um, a lot of time when we are creating dark patterns, we are lost the battle that really pay attention to the user needs. And as a designer, I feel like it's a time for us to take responsibility for the impact that the products and service we build are heavy on the people it should serve. As we see today, a lot of technology enhancing um, our ability as humans. However, we've also seen it's being a vehicle for extracting our attention, monetizing our personal information, and exploiting our psycholog psychological vulnerability. For example, um, we also see the patterns that trick us to do things that we don't want. And using, for example, the UX writing to making the decision for us. And at the same time, as the data privacy is so important today, we are losing the access to the, our personal data and we don't have transparency on the data. So I will sh share a few example here. For example, this is a VPN tool um, I used to use. They are the steps to actually cancel all my personal data. It's super complicated. Um, so for example, here you need to delete the account and personal data to continue. It prompts you to confirm it. And at the same time, you're using the UX writing that says, we're sorry, you are not, uh, we're not gonna see you again and hope you, you will be back soon. However, it's not successful. <laughs> and I have to contact a customer support and it's such a long way to delete only my personal data from the websites. And another example, which is from the New York Times. I actually did a timing this time. Uh, the time it cost me to unsubscribe from New York time takes me about eight minutes. I need to wait for the call. I need to wait on the chat. And at the end, the customer success is always prompt me and saying, we have an amazing offer if you can take. You can save how much money for yearly subscription if you want to continue. Those friction in those flows shows how the deck dark patterns really work. We always understand we want to use CTA, we want to use the design to help the user accomplish their goal. However, in this case, 
we are bended by the business goal because canceling the subscription may be not healthy for the business. We tend to do, we tend to chose the painful way for them for the own subscription experience. On the other side, um, we're also seeing a lot of hidden experience. In this example for the eBay, if I sign up with Google, it will using those tiny words and saying, we'll send you emails for offers. Once you sign up, we using those patterns to create benefits for the business. However, the user don't want that um, functionality. I don't want my email inbox to be bumped every day by eBay offers. Another example also from the tunnel beer is like how they introduce in that downgrading experience and really using the words um, that almost feels like killing the beer, make me feel guilty. Those experiences are not happy and saying goodbye is part of the journey, user journey as well. So actually I started to think why we get into these dark patterns at the first place. So the first reason we are actually are doing that is we are getting really good at exploring knowing cognitive weakness and quirks, really good. For example, the skinny box, we're testing user behavior on a controlled environment. We really dig into the principle of behavior design. It is foundational of variable rewards and we are all suckers for them. For blueprints on how to bake addictive properties like that into products, that's the hook. How to build a, like a habit forming product. And as I learned in the Silicon Valley products as well, a lot of times um, we have the generation of the products with a, a, an array of characteristics proven to be persuaded and form habits. A lot of times we are looking for social approval and reciprocal, bundling with user needs with business desires, choice controls, and bottomless balls. This is all controlled by algorithms. So we want it to be more fundamental and biological. Secondly, I would say we are all incentives for success. Thinking about a coffee machine, how do you define a, it as a success design of a coffee maker? You probably want it to be easy to use and easy to understand, pleasurable brewing, brewing experience. However, when you think it, it's from a local handcrafted coffee shop, do you want it to know your coffee in your body? Do you want to know your conception patterns? Or maybe it will know automatically brew you another cup of coffee when you want to have another one. But do we care about how much coffee it can get you? It, we only care about how much coffee it can get you to consume that is defined as a success. However, we didn't define your health in that case. We didn't pay enough attention to a human well-being. Thirdly, is because of the rapid, sorry for the typo, <laughs> optimization and the strategy we chose. For example, if we're in a casino, today's rapid product development cycle is just gonna be able to do when fed attention-driven success incentives, a method of persuasions as inputs. Picture a Las Vegas casino filled with conventional slots machine. The machines are already designed to produce variable rewards, near wings, and enchant people into trances. Now imagine they get into continuous measure, A-B testing, optimize their algorithm precision, 
with even more effective versions being rolled out without losing a minute of uptime. It also goes to a strategy, carefully crafted experiments determine which behavior persuasion variation is more effective. Combine this with the speed at which we can analyze those experiments and deploy tweaks. The result is products that get sticker and sticker. The sophistication of the technology of how growth is achieved so easily and often developed around quickly turning around by products that has narcotic properties are not necessarily a question of improving well being. So, how are we going to break dark patterns? I think I always, um, going back to the dieter Rams, he is who suggested the 10 principle of good designs. And one of the quotes I have is there's no longer room for irrelevant things. We have no longer to get resources, irrelevance is out. When we are thinking what is a good design, in a vintage point, we always pay attention to the user experience. As we are making it better, we, I feel like once the loopholes start to emerge, I want to introduce the ethical design in there as well, which brings to the values as a designer, which I think we should create respectful design, empowering design, and transparent design. So how are we gonna do that? So to design a respectful design, I think about like how we can pay more attention to prioritize people's time, attention, and overall digital well-being. I feel like the first um, tips will be align delivery with urgency. For example, we'll receive a notification every day. Um, for example, like on the LinkedIn this morning, I opened up, like I have 15 notification for different posts, different interaction, but is that really urgent ones? All the information are losing the focus without the urgency. Not every notification is urgent one. The method in which we deliver a notification should align with its importance to minimize the distraction as we're living in so much distraction today. Secondly, is allow for personalizations. Allow the users to really customize from whom, from when, and how they can receive notification to minimize that unwanted interruptions, or even from the app. Do we allow them to customize the experience they want? Lastly, I would say respect and adapt to context. Just as human understand when and how it's appropriate to communicate with one another in the context, technology should be respect and adapt to the user context as well. Secondly, I think it's empowering design. Empowering design is really thinking about to ensure the products centered on value they provided people over than the revenue it can generate. A lot of times we pay attention to the close goal, to the revenue of next year. We lost the focus of the long-term goal. The empowering design really ensure the product long run, how we can bring benefits and make it a better world. So the first thought is like in control giving the people the control they needed to manage the algorithms that shape their experience. Secondly, is privacy and anonymity. I always remember when Facebook data leak the news right now, and I was such, in a such shock. To giving people the control of their needs to manage um, privacy and anonymity, 
really brings your confidence in the product. Lastly, I would say promote awareness. We are promoting the usage awareness to encourage healthier digital habits. For example, Uber has this design that prompted users keep driving, Uber driver, um, keep driving to earn much more. However, we've seen on the news that the Uber driver got into an accident after 14 hours of driving. How we can actually promote healthier digital habits. For example, are you gonna put down your cell phone on the weekends? Just a little bit more time with your family. Lastly, I think it's transparent design. Transparent design is about clear about the intention and honest in the actions and free of the dark patterns. We have the right to know as a user exactly what they're signing up for when they're deciding to use a product. Make it super clear and specific. Be honest goes a long way. It also help them to build the trust into the product. Secondly, is the data transparency. Communicate exactly what data is being collected and why it is being collected. I'm super happy to see the industry has been changing, like how we collect the data and not using it everywhere. Lastly, is access to the data. Given the user access to the data being collected on them, we ensure it's easy to find. We're not hiding any information. And there are also other topics under it. For example, easy exit to ensure users can easily find options to unsubscribe, delete their account if they choose to do so, or avoiding misdirection. We can avoid misdirection users by following usability best practices, maintaining consistent UI, ensuring links and buttons are clear and recognizable and not disguise them as a content or as. So I feel like designers really need to insist on transparency, especially about the user privacy settings and solution that allow users to opt in rather than opting out of the data collection. This really help we build better organization and product that justify the needs of data and rather than just collecting it because they can. So finally, I really want to add into that list of 10 good designs. In my opinion, good design need to be ethical. So, I would like to open the floor to a conversation. I guess if you have any questions or if you want to share any time you encounter a dark patterns, feel free to yeah. raise hand. Yeah. For this, yeah, um, we'll have anybody who has any questions or would like to speak, please use the raise your hand function and we will go ahead and unmute you um, for that. Hi. Um, one, Hi. <laughs> uh, one pattern that um, I've seen a lot recently, especially on like a lot of, uh, this is kind of like a very specific example, but like fast fashion um, or like yeah. a lot of like kind of um, bigger, more um, like outsource, I don't know, kind of websites are like um, copywriting where it makes the user intentionally feel bad. Like like if they, the only ways they could exit is even either by clicking a button that says like, no, I don't want to save money or like, or like saying, or having to like sign up into something. So um, I guess my question is like, there's examples of that where uh, dark patterns aren't necessarily in integrated into product design, but things like, like the software of the product itself or like copyrighted, yeah. like in this specific example. So yeah. um but obviously pe those people have their own opinions as to why, or like reasons as to why they're doing, like making that quote unquote bad, uh, 
dark pattern. So yeah. um, how would you kind of go about in speaking to people about these issues and like like things that people are more specialized in their positions, but you see as a dark pattern in UX overall? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think UX writing can be sometimes dry, um, but the, often there's a desire, like we try to inject some personality into the copy and cause to actions. That is great. I think it is important for software to express some kind of humanity, but often this approach also becoming problematic when an interface speaks on behalf of its user. I think that's when it gets really dangerous. It almost feels like forcing them to make decision in a voice that's not their own, right? So I think to approach in different departments and speaking for, speaking for design, I think first I would definitely advocate for uh, getting rid of the dark patterns and how we can promote ethical designs more into the organization. Secondly, I think there's a, a flip side of the dark pattern because we are only focusing on the short run. Like for example, um, if we want to use the UX writing to promote uh, that the subscription plan, for example, a lot of the cases are yearly built. If you pay monthly, it's gonna charge much more. However, some of the UX writing didn't make it clear. Some will really um, kind of, uh, make it in a good way. So you are choosing the right package. However, um, in my experience, I actually reach out to the marketing department and I'm saying, we can set the data and we can see the long run. And I see when we implemented that method, we see much more call in our customer, uh, customer success team. There are much more customer complaining about the subscription by yearly instead of monthly. So without making that clear, we lost the trust of the users. And actually the data backed me up. So in my last row, we tried it. And then after a year, we see instantly higher subscription within that time. However, after a year, we see the data actually going down. And I was able to go back to the marketing team and say, we see a long-term hurt for the brand, for the product. By changing uh, the dark patterns, we bring the connection to the users and build a long-term stability and trust into the product. So I think by breaking the dark patterns in your example, I were reaching out to different departments, thinking about advocate for the long run and advocate what benefits it will bring to you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for um, answering. <laughs> that was really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah, so I don't Hi, Charles. necessarily, uh, it's not a very specific um, uh, dark pattern necessarily, but I think a lot of times you'll see, um, usually I think in websites more frequently, that um, a lot of um, a lot of uh, UI tend to um, take advantage of uh, not necessarily people that, that are impaired, but usually like older generations or people that are less familiar with technology and navigating um, some of the more flashy and confusing websites where a yep. younger person might understand how to cancel or get away from an ad really quickly, but others that might have less experience with computers just sometimes fall into this hole of not being able to to find their way through the the things that they need to get to and navigate yeah. and they might end up like purchasing something that they don't they weren't initially intending to purchase or whatever so i think that was uh, something that i see a lot yeah i totally align with that maybe it's like not aligned with dark patterns specifically um, but I definitely think inclusive design is part of the ethical design, um, right? Like, so how we design for disabilities, for example. I have this amazing talk with the Google accessibility team that they actually have a deck and let you experience what it looks like if you lost part of your site and how you interact with the phone, how you use those voice interactions. So I would say designing solutions for disabled often result in a feature that everyone can be benefits from, actually. 
Yeah, for sure. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah. And also a little bit add on to that. I think inclusive design is actually a win-win for customer and business because it's actually expanding your product's reach speaks for innovations and really helps like different companies to take on position for social responsibility. And actually I'm super happy to see different bigger company are aware, have more aware of that and bring more attention to inclusive design. Yeah, um, if anybody else has any other questions, we've actually made it so that you can unmute yourselves. Um, so if you'd like to ask a question, or if you're just a little um, voice shy, you can also feel free to pop something in the chat as well. Um, and we can talk about that too. But yeah, I guess in the meantime, I'd just like to ask you, Peter, um, how you first got to even thinking about um, ethical design in this kind of way in the first place. Yeah, I think um, first is my personal experience. I see like a lot of apps are just using tricks and using um, different psychology paths that hooking up the decision for me and for different reasons, right? So uh, for, exa for example, I remember like when I was using Adobe, um, you can add a user into a plan fairly easily, but when I tried to remove that, I can remove the user, but I didn't remove the subscription, the seats. It's so not obvious that I keep getting charged for months. Uh, I think, uh, it really goes back to how we think about the business and products. Um, at that moment, I really lost lost the trust in Adobe. <laughs> um, and secondly, I think it goes to the experience. Um, I designed an app for the people that are deaf and really like how we can connect uh, different users. So basically, like they can tap on the app and someone else will help them if they're nearby. But that experience really opened my eye. How we interact with the technology really makes um, a lot of new minority, which we call like minority in the technology because they don't have experience, they don't have access to that. That brings me to aware like as a designer, we really have a lot of impact into the product. But with that huge responsibility, are we gonna impact it in a good way to really pay attention to the well beings? Or are we just gonna keep the short term goal, the business goal, and thinking about how we can treat people? For sure. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really great. And it's really good to think about. I guess I'd also be curious to know if you've ever or if there's anything that sticks out to you as like an example of good design in like, or good ethics in UX design, or even if it's just um, that you don't even notice it because the experience is so um, transparent and clear. So you're just having a good user experience. Um, yeah. If there's anything that you've sort of encountered that stuck out to you that way. Yeah, I think like Dropbox um, did a good job being transparent, like when you're changing the plan or when you unsubscribe, they provide a transparent experience and they let you know you can come back at any time and we're keeping your files. Uh, so for example, like that, I think we make it, um, I believe in the product. And at the same time, uh, I think about their company as well. I feel like they are a more ethical company. And another example, I feel like Salesforce, uh, more like a business, they kind of donate their 1% of the revenue for the well beings. I think really thinking about that, those companies uh, bring a lot of social awareness, how we solving the problem. Just because people are different or like we're using the product in different ways, doesn't mean like we don't have the right to get what we want with the technology. 
Yeah, that's that's really great questions. Great. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I guess like a important. question uh, for other listener over here is like, do you think of the dark parents you ever encountered, and what's your reaction to that? Yeah, I think I definitely think people might be just reflecting on maybe dark patterns they didn't notice at first, but are thinking back on. Yes, so. Totally says, agree with the New York Times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I guess another perspective. Um, to solving their dog problem, especially like a lot of different teams are involved in the business decision. It's actually thinking about the long run. I always think um, as a business, as a product, we don't need to treat it as a finite design, right? It's actually an infinite game. There's a book called about infinite game I read, and I really enjoy reading it. Let's talk about the business or the company goal it's actually how you can involve in the business, how you can keep the company, keep going and building trust to the people and being ethics at the same time. So we, just as Joe mentioned, probably like you can trick it once, but you lost that customer forever. Thinking about the long run, do you want to build um, the trust using the design? I'm reading the questions from Joe, um, which is, what is the favorite or go-to resource online to educate ourselves on dark patterns? There are definitely some good resources. There's a darkpattern.org, I believe, um, which talk about deceptive designs and examples. Um, and there are also a inclusive design principle.org, which I will share in the chat, talk about like how we can help the design to be more inclusive. Yeah, of course. And the book I do want to share is um, The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek, which we talk about like um, we are in counter in the business right now. It's like a finite game. So how we think about the business and the goal of a product in the long run and why. We also have another question in the chat, which is, are there any laws against dark patterns? Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, I think the few ones I share is uh, some of the tips, for example, being transparent, um, being respectful, and really empowering the users, taking control of the product. Uh, that is some of the principle I think is important for dark brands and we really encourage team include those thinking when you are designing products or flows.
Yeah. So um, if anybody else has any questions anymore, this is kind of the last call for it. Um, but if not, um, and I think that would be the uh, end of the workshop. But thank you so much, Peter, for this presentation and this workshop on um, ethical UX and breaking dark patterns. It was so interesting. Um, and I learned a lot myself um, about something I didn't really think about beforehand. Um, and yeah, so thank you for being here. And thank you for everybody who asked questions um, and uh, participated in the interactive portion of the workshop. Um, this workshop will be recorded and available um, afterwards on the Forge YouTube channel. We will also be sharing it in the Slack. Um, and that is it for this workshop. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you Bye. everyone for coming. Bye.